Good morning, everyone. We hear a, a buzz of a, a dynamic, dynamic excitement. You're being here this morning, and we're delighted to have you here with us this morning. You have to know that for those of us in the D.C. area, one of you is a sight for sore eyes. We're delighted that we were able to continue to hold the summit as planned. A former prominent congressman used to say, a million here, a million there, pretty soon you're talking about real money. And for some of us in D.C., a day here, a day there, but a week here, a week there, pretty soon you were talking about real time. But our, but our planning committee, our international planning committee, had worked so well together over the past several months that we were confident that we'd be able to proceed and they went on flawlessly while some of us weren't quite able to participate. On a more serious note, I am very sorry to let you know that although NSF Acting Director Dr. Cora Merritt was very much looking forward to joining us here today, uh, due to a loss in her family of a beloved family member, her nephew, a few days ago, she won't be able to attend the summit. And no doubt, all of our thoughts and prayers are with her and her family at this time. And so on her behalf, I'd also like to thank all the members of the International Planning Committee, colleagues at the European Commission, and the many dignitaries and attendees for participating and contributing to this event today. Indeed, I'm honored to stand before such a prestigious crowd this morning and welcome all of you to Gender Summit 3 North America. Over the next few days, we will explore the theme, Diversity Fueling Excellence in Research and Innovation. We will work to develop a roadmap for action, sharing research and evidence, inspirations and solutions. This roadmap will be a path to a larger goal, greater diversity in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics workforce and leadership, and greater gender considerations in the research process itself. The National Science Foundation has long supported these goals we're proud to be the only federal agency funding all fields of fundamental science and engineering. Our mandate includes investing in high risk, high impact, transformative research. For decades, we've supported programs that excite and engage girls and women in STEM. Still, the goals of this summer, summit are not easy ones to attain. Despite recent gains, Women remain underrepresented at nearly all levels of the science and engineering enterprise, especially the upper levels of leadership. The disparity is especially great in mathematics, physics, computer science, and engineering. Historically, little thought has been paid to gender considerations in the content and process of scientific research. Changing these may be downright daunting. But as I look out at this crowd today here, accomplished scientists and leaders committed to diversity and committed to empowering women, I'm reminded of a quote from another accomplished scientist and leader, Dr. Marie Curie. Her 147th birthday was last Thursday. Life is not easy for any of us, but what of it? We must have perseverance and above all, confidence in ourselves. We must believe that we're gifted for something and that this thing must be attained, she said. Dr. Curie always persevered, despite poor health and negative public opinion, despite the challenges of raising a family while conducting groundbreaking science. Her accomplishments, two Nobel Prizes, securing a professorship at the Sorbonne, the discovery of radium and polonium still awe us more than a century later. As we embark on the Gender Summit, we should take Dr. Curie's words to heart. This meeting is an opportunity to achieve positive change for all women and men in the STEM enterprise. We must persevere 
to realize this goal. We must have confidence that it can and should be achieved. But the goals of this summit go beyond benefits to women and girls in STEM, as I said. Indeed, incorporation of the gender dimension into research and innovation benefit both women and men and the scientific enterprise itself. I urge all of you to take advantage of this gender summit. Talk to each other, learn from each other. Let us leave with a commitment to diversity and inclusiveness that will translate into action. I now have the pleasure of introducing an essential partner of this event, Dr. Elizabeth Pulitzer, a computer scientist by training, an accomplished advocate for gender equality and the incorporation of gender dimension into the scientific research and innovation, and the head of Porsche Limited. Dr. Pulitzer will introduce the two esteemed European leaders who will share some words of welcome via vid video to help kick off this event. I bring to you Elizabeth Pulitzer. Let's give her a warm welcome. I have to put my glasses in, so I'll make sure you are there. Uh, so we are in Europe in a particularly optimistic position at the moment because gender dimension and gen action on gender has been written into the policy on research and innovation. So we are excited and we hope it's all going to work out in a way that's going to be implemented and we don't have to talk about uh, those issues in the way that we have to do at the moment. We just will concentrate on doing excellent work and excellent research on uh, gender in science. Uh, with this video, uh, with this summit coming out for, from Europe, we are bringing two messages from two very important supporters of gender action in science. Uh, one is from the European Parliament, Vice President Aldrich Vlasak, who, uh, with his support, we held the last gender summit at the European, actually inside the European Parliament. And this was very important because parliamentarians were deciding on the budget for the next Horizon 2020 program, which is 80 billion euros to be spent on research. And of course, there were politicians, so what they look, were looking for is really how to cut that budget. And it was very important that they didn't cut gender out of that proposal. So by holding the uh, summit inside the parliament, we brought the evidence and the arguments directly to the politicians, and it worked. The other person that is going to send you messages of welcome is the Commissioner for Research and Innovation at the European Commission, that's Mary Goigan Quinn. Without her, there would not be gender, a gender mentioned in Horizon 2020. It is she who had the power, the leadership, and this, the ability to persuade people that it should be explicitly mentioned in the program that has been proposed for Horizon 2020. And that gives us the beginning in which to press for real action and monitor that action and monitor the results. So uh, I just, that's, you might as well hear from them and not anything more from me. You will hear from me later on in this program. So I would like to introduce first the video from the President Vlasak. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, as representative of last year's hosting institution, the European Parliament, I'm happy to see that the third gender summit has gained a transatlantic dimension. In my capacity as the Vice President responsible for the Science and Technology Option Assessment, I have always stressed the importance of research and development. I am deeply convinced that Europe's as well as US future economic growth will increasingly need to originate from innovation activity. For this reason, I have always advocated investments in this area. However, being on the, on the other hand a conservative politician, I fully realize the overall scar scarcity of resources, be it financial or human ones. At the beginning of my professional career, I worked in a research institute. Besides, 
registering several improvement proposals and utility patents together with my colleagues. I have recognized the necessity to invest in resources effectively. And I can tell you that at this point, both Europe and the United States could do better. Uh, with regard to human capital, we can't afford to waste any research talents. This means we should not discourage any part of the population from participating in research and innovation. If you look at the involvement and pay conditions of women in this area, we find out that this exactly what is happening. The gender pay gap is evident on both sides of the Atlantic. European women in general earn 17% less than men for the same jobs. In America, data from the Institute of Women's Policy Research shows that the pay difference is approximately and 19%. As stated by John Kerry at the meeting of the Equal Futures Partnership in September, no team can ever win if half of its players are on their bench. The European Parliament has been a constant critic of gender inequalities in Europe. In my view, measures to bring gender inequalities in the area of research and innovation should be considered an investment rather than a cost. What we pay today will generate returns for the economy as a whole in the medium and long term by reducing the ineffectiveness associated with inequality. What do I base this assumption on? On the field which I know best, women have successfully held leadership roles in politics. Remember Madeleine Albright, Condoleezza Rich, and Hillary Clinton in the United States, why Angela Merkel and Christine Lagarde currently hold prominent leadership position in Europe and at an international level. In this regard, it's with great pleasure that we can find positive examples in the new year EU member states as well. Uh, coming from Czech Republic and uh, bearing in mind elections held, there, held here in October this year, let me point out the election leader of the Civic Democratic Party, Miroslava Nemcova. Hillary Clinton was once quoted that the rights of women and girls in the un unfinished business of the 21st century. I can agree more with the statement and believe that the third gender summit will address the causes of why women are still underrepresented in the areas of research, science and innovation. We should face in the fact that the gender imbalances are not a self-correcting phenomenon. Moreover, we should see that as a matter of research potential as well as of social justice. I wish you a fruitful discussion and hope that I will be able to join you in person next time. Thank you for your attention. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to have this opportunity to address you on the opening of the Third Gender Summit. International cooperation on research and innovation is a major priority for the European Union. This is because it makes perfect sense, both for scientific and economic reasons, to bring the world's best researchers together where possible in order to tackle our common challenges. It is for similar reasons that we cannot afford to waste female talent in research and innovation. We need all our talents on board, women as well as men. As the European Commissioner for Research, Innovation and Science, I have been privileged to see at first hand 
countless examples of how women's understanding, skills and determination contribute to knowledge, innovation and economic growth. Unfortunately, however, for a number of complex reasons, women scientists are not yet able to fully capitalise on their talents. We are working hard to change this situation in Europe. We are tackling the root causes of the problem by encouraging more girls and young women to study science and go on to work in science, and by overturning the obstacles that women face in research careers. There is no trade-off between promoting gender equality and excellence in research. Quite the opposite. We have plenty of sound evidence that gender diversity improves the performance of research teams. However, in Europe, as well as in North America, there are still too few women at the top in research. And integrating gender analysis into research content helps improve the quality of research results and their relevance to society. Of course, these issues are not unique to Europe. Other countries face similar questions, and it's important to tackle them together. I'm very pleased, therefore, that many European experts are participating in the Gender Summit and that there will be a session dedicated to creating bridges with European funders. One of the organisations taking part, the European Research Council, is directly funded by the European Union. And speaking of funding, the EU's new seven-year programme for research and innovation, Horizon 2020, will launch next month with a budget of 70 billion euro or around 96 billion US dollars. I want the clout and impact of this major European funding programme to champion gender equality in research and innovation. We will do this in three ways. First, by integrating the gender dimension into the different programmes and projects that constitute Horizon 2020. Second, by encouraging a balanced participation of women and men in research teams that are funded. And third, by ensuring gender balance and good gender expertise, both in the expert groups that advise on the priorities for Horizon 2020 and in the teams that evaluate the applications for funding. In short, we want Horizon 2020 to help improve the careers of female scientists, promote a better gender balance in decision making and integrate the gender dimension into the content of research. Horizon 2020 is open to the world and we are counting on researchers and innovators from Canada, Mexico and the United States among others to participate very actively. There will be many opportunities for collaboration with partners in Europe and to help make the breakthroughs that will boost our economies and improve our everyday lives. We can already see excellent cooperation across the Atlantic on many of the issues that you will discuss at the Gender Summit. Structural change in research institutions is a key objective in Europe to promote gender equality. The GenderNet project brings together national ministries and managers of research programmes from 11 countries, including Canada and the United States. They are working together to promote gender equality strategies in research institutions and to integrate the gender dimension into the content of research. A major goal, of course, is to improve the career paths of female scientists, as well as the working conditions of both women and men. Another example is the recent report on gendered innovations, how gender analysis contributes to research, prepared by academics from the EU, Canada and the US. The report demonstrates that gender differences in terms of needs, behaviours and attitudes play an important role in research design and content. The report also provides tools and guidance that will help the research communities on both sides of the Atlantic to boost the gender dimension of their research. These are just a couple of examples of existing international cooperation. But of course, there is still much more to be done. You have three challenging days ahead of you. I'm sure that you will go home with many concrete ideas to improve gender equality in research at all levels. We look forward to the results of the conference 
and hope that it will provide many more suggestions and opportunities for collaboration with partners in the European Union. Thank you. So we are waiting on the next very important guest. Yes, and while we are awaiting them, I think maybe we can just, I just want to point out to you how important those words are. It's the first time that a science leader was, well, not a politician, was able to speak on behalf of science and affirm that this is now part of the policy in Europe. And Wanda has mentioned Marie Curie. I used to, uh, for many years, work for a, a charity that helps women re scientists return to science after a career break. And one thing we used in the advertising is to say to people, would you allow Marie Curie work in the supermarkets uh, stacking shelves just because she had two children and felt that she, that was the only choice for her, is to abandon her career because it was so hard to combine the two. No, we wouldn't. And I think many, many more talented women are in this situation. They feel that somehow the pressures, the, the way the career paths are evolving for them are not really uh, combine what the, the other responsibilities. So I think that's what we need to do this, this summit. We need to keep in mind two things that the leaders have to speak out and they can speak out. There's plenty of evidence for them to speak out. And we have a task to make sure that at the level of practices and processes that there are changes as well that make it life for women in science at the same as it is for men.